Hey, it's Nikachu and Lurus. Go to hell. You are finally banned from modern. At least one, the first, the most egregious companion that was printed in Ikoria is finally finished. Lurus of the Dream Den is banned. Now we're going to check out the uh, the announcement to this banning, and uh, it's. It was sort of a surprise. We didn't expect this coming, especially since Wizards R&D were giving us the uh, impression that, hey, we looked at the data and you know what? Right now is not the time to ban Luris. And now they just go back on it immediately after so much backlash on social media. We're in charge here. This is another, I mean, we'll look at the announcement. Now they did ban more than just Luris and Modern, they banned uh, Luris also in Pioneer, so it got a double banning, not only in Modern, but also Pioneer. Popper also got hit a little bit. Galvanic Relay was banned. They're still going after the Artifact decks with Disciple of Vault, and Expedition Map is now unbanned. It's like, well, maybe we banned this thing. It was a little weird banning. Now they're going to unban that. Let's go on to Luris of the Dream Den for Modern. Since the release of Modern Horizons 2, Modern has enjoyed a period of experimentation and exploration. Despite that, Luris of the Dream Den has remained ubiquitous presence in the format across multiple archetypes. Tons! We're talking like Jun Luris, Grixis Shadow Luris, you see it in uh, Red White Prowess decks, you see it in Hammer Time, and anything else that can be played at a really low curve. Luris's play rate, 31%. In Magic Online League decks that started with four, uh, four wins points to a card that is contributing to a homogenization of the modern play experience. There is not a significant enough deck building cost to incorporate it into a wide variety of strategies. Well, if you had these stats in the first place, you knew this 31%, then why didn't we get rid of this thing earlier? Why did it have to come to now? I mean, you could have banned this card like one and a half years from now. It was sitting in Modern for two years. For two years. As, as is often the case in larger non-rotating formats, there are already strong incentives to include as many cheap and efficient cards as possible in your deck due to format speed and a variety of other pressures. Luris compounds those incentives by providing a powerful additional resource that helps to alleviate the weakness of fi uh, filling your deck with cheaper and less, often less impactful cards as games go on. For many, for too many archetypes, Luris isn't a trade-off, but is purely additive. No, well, I mean, it's, it's a huge add, uh, it's a huge add. I mean, it's a insane long game win machine. I mean, if both players' hands are empty, then the person who plays with the Luris ends up winning because they go get the Luris. That's a free card. They put the Luris on the battlefield. They get another free card from the graveyard. And if you don't kill the Luris on the spot, I mean, that game cascades into complete oblivion. The person is just going to get an extra, basically two cards a turn for forever. Due to play data, community feedback. That's the most important one. They didn't care about the data. They had the data for years. They had it for years. They had this 31% a week ago. They made some bannings not too long ago, and they, uh, they decided not to ban anything in Modern. It was purely because of the community feedback and a desire to keep as diverse a range of card options as possible available to the Modern players. Lurus of the Dream Den is banned in Modern. Now, the weird thing, and now they do address this, is that this is the only card that gets banned. It was the only. It was the only. It was the only companion that the that they banned. We assumed that if they were going to go after the companions, that they were going to go after all of them, or they were going to ban the companion mechanic. And now it's it's in the bag. They're not banning the mechanic. That's a weird thing to do anyway. They're just going to go after the cards. The cards are going to get banned. But I guess it was like it was going to be a weird thing if they banned Umori, the collector, because this card sees absolutely no play in modern, none whatsoever. So if they're not going to ban Umori, you know what I mean? Like, like it would be so weird to see Umori on the ban list. People years from now would be like, why did that card get on the ban list? How is that possible? That's a bit that's a bit strange. Well, it's because they're probably going to give it a chance, and it's probably not going to see play anyway. Uh, but back to 
back to their explanation, companions in general, while, while Lurus's presence in Modern and Pioneer are large enough for us to act today, the rest of the companions are seeing a play rate that is in line with a diverse and healthy metagame. Like other components of their environments, we'll continue to monitor them for undesirable and repetitive gameplay and make individual changes as necessary. You know what? They wouldn't have done that back in the day. Back in the day, Dig Through Time barely saw any play in Modern because Treasure Crews basically sucked up all the uh, attention. And they're like, they could see the writing on the wall back then. Alright, let's ban Treasure Crews and take out Dig Through Time at the same time. Why are we- we know Dig Through Time is gonna get banned. And they should know! They should know that things like Yorin are, are about to get banned. Yeah, sir, Yorin is within the play patterns today, but now that there's no Lurus, What's going to end up happening is all the other decks that have playable companions, ones that you play with Yorian, Abosh, Kahira, they're all going to go up in value. They're all going to go up in value. Now the uh, Death and Taxes decks that want to play Yorian. There was just a Spirits deck that made top 8 in the Modern Challenge because they added Yorian to their deck and Solitude and Subtlety. But they added Yorian and basically now these are the decks that are going to get the 8th card in their hand. And this is going to be a big burden. Maybe not, they're not going to make it, not going to make it unplayable, but a lot of those Lurus decks, they were attrition decks, and now they don't get to play with the companion, but other people do. Unless they want to add Yor Yorian or something like that. Which is possible. Maybe that, maybe that's going to happen. So, um, if we take a look, so the next question is, okay, who benefits from this? Who benefits? Who gets hurt? The decks with Lurus, they're going to go down in meta percentage, of course. Of course they will. So we're talking Death Shadow, we're talking Hammer Time. A little bit, they didn't depend as much on Lurus, but hey, Lurus and Tamishra's Bobble, that is big game. When the board stalls out getting two extra cards, that still helps in any matchup. Um, the uh, Burn's not going to change at all. I mean, they, they pro <laughs> some people might argue that the deck gets better because no one will waste its 15th card slot with Lurus of the Dream Den. Jund is going to get hit. Uh, and Rakdos Midrange, the pro uh, Red White Prowess deck. And for the most part, like, these decks aren't going to become unplayable. They get hit, but it's not unplayable. But the problem is because the other companions are still in the metagame, you know, the, the Yorian decks, we're going to the Blink deck is going to gain more value. Like, why would you not want to play with a companion deck? Like, why would you not? You have to play with a companion deck or some deck that's so powerful like Amulet Titan, Crashing Footfalls, Yawgmoth, that makes up for the fact that you don't play with the companion. So I would say Death Shadow is still playable, it's going to still be good, but the uh, the most hardcore competitive modern players, they're going to stray away from those decks to play with a companion because having an 8th card in your hand, especially against the attrition based decks, that's not something they're, wanna, they're not going to, they're not going to give that advantage up. I don't think they're going to want to give up, up, that, up that advantage. And it would have been so much more fair if they just banned all the companions. Then I would say the Lurus decks had nothing to worry about. Because now everyone is on a fair playing field. So we're just going to have to wait for the Yorian decks, Kahira decks, the Control decks, effectively. Maybe even the Abosh decks are not going to get, get some value. They're going to be more more of a presence in the metagame. Um... Now that's not to all the decks. Some decks actually have a replacement. Some 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 decks are going to have a replacement. So here's Canister, who made kind of a cheeky joke here. New best Grixis da Death Shadow deck list for folks that got their deck banned. It's, it's the same thing, same 75. Everything's identical except uh, instead of Lurus in the sideboard, now has Gigantha. Gigantha might find its way into a lot of decks now because uh, if you you know if the deck is already in in line with the requirements of Gigantha. No problem. No problem whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, we're going to probably see a little bit more of Gigantha and just, just random companions, anything that people can grab onto. Now, they said, you know, it's it restricts deck building. Lurus restricts deck building. We want our three drops back. So what three drops can we expect to see in Modern? Now, I don't have the exhaustive list, but uh, without a doubt, no matter what, we're definitely going to be seeing Season Pyromancer back. This was a very good card. Still is. Was a, strictly a replacement to Faithless Looting. You got a body. You get more creatures. You still get the looting effect. Value from the graveyard. Season Pyromancer is going to come back. Uh, I don't know in which archetypes, which decks, but Season Pyromancer definitely is one of the best three drops that was printed in the last two years and was only held back by the fact that Lurus of the Dream Den 
You know, you can't play it with it. You just can't play with it. Next, uh, Bone Crusher Giant. Probably is still going to st also see play. The, the Stomp kills Ragavan or the earlier uh, stage of Dragon Rage Channeler. I think Bone Crusher Giant has a place in this modern metagame, but you know, at, at three mana, could only see play in very few decks. The Abosh decks, some Ponza decks. I think those Ponza decks are still waiting for like. Uh, those Ponza decks are still waiting for all the companions to be banished so that that deck can be more, be more relevant. And some people are talking about Lilian. No, Lilian is not coming back. No. No. No! <laughs> Lilian is unplayable. Lilian has been unplayable for years. And the fact that Lurus is banned does not. I think that's what helped the Death Shadow decks, in my opinion. I think I think that's the only reason Death. Like, sorry, uh, uh, Jund decks. I think that's what helped the. The Jund decks, we look at Jund over here. Jund was like basically struggling with Boomer Jund, but finally, finally, they were forced to play with good cards, to play with Tarmogoyf, to play with uh, Dragon Rage Channeler, Tarmogoyf, Ragavan, all the new flashy cards, Ren and Six, and get rid of the garbage cards. Get rid of all the garbage cards. You know, Bloodbraid Elf doesn't even look like it's worth it. Four mana for a 3 2 creature that gets a random card. I mean, it might even be like an Inquisition or Thoughtseize, which isn't even relevant by turn four anymore. It may not be relevant. So, like, the, the new cards force the Jun players. Lurus forced the Jun players to play with good cards. And now, like, you think they're going to go back to this thing? You know what? They will. They'll try. But it's a mistake. Now, another interesting thing about, uh, uh, this banning announcement is that I thought I always thought that Bobble would get banned first and then they would ban Luris. But instead, they banned Luris and we still have Bobble. And it looks like Bobble's gonna be around here for quite a while. You know how I feel about the zero drops? I don't like them at all. And I do still believe one day then there's gonna be a, one more last nail in the coffin for Mishra's Bobble. Somehow Luris wasn't it. But, um, yeah, so we're going to live with Mishra's Bobble for who knows how many years. It is no longer a really big target. It's going to be played in a very fair way, probably to, I don't know, fuel Murktide. We, I mean, we, maybe we'll see Murktide Regent being played in Death Shadow decks. It's a possibility! You know, let's not... They played with Gurmog Angler back in the day. Maybe now they have enough incentive to try to play uh, Murktide Regent in the Death Shadow deck. We'll see what happens. Removal spells are unbanned. Have you ever noticed that the most popular removal spells are effectively like Prismatic Ending, Solitude, um, and then like Unholy Heat? We don't even see many Fatal Pushes, Lightning Bolts, Dismembers anymore because killing creatures was pointless. You kill the creature. Okay, cards, we are, we're empty-handed. They go get Lurus. They put the creature back onto the battlefield. That wasn't worth it at all. And the only, the only reason Unholy Heat saw any play Let's go get Unholy Heat up here. Like, the only reason, like, Unholy Heat is an exception to this whole rule is because it could kill, like, Primeval Titan, and occasionally Murktod region if it's not too out of control. It effectively kills any card within the red colors, but for the most part, we saw Prismatic Ending as uh, one of the premier removal spells of the format, especially since Lurus kept the casting cost of all the cards really low. This card might get really clunky! I mean, if people are going to start playing, exploring the, the three drops, the four drops, maybe some five drops, this thing's going to get a lot worse really fast. Uh, and, uh, of course, Solitude was a big deal because the uh, exiling creatures mattered. Exiling creatures mattered so much because in the long game, those Lurus decks could not bring those cards back from the graveyard. But now it doesn't matter. Now it doesn't matter. We don't have to worry about it. Luris, you're not going to terrorize me anymore in the late game. And there now is a late game! You, in theory, could exchange resources, and boom, we are in the late game, and we're in top deck mode instead of our opponents being in Luris mode. Okay, late game. Instead of top deck mode, pay three, put Luris in our hand, bam, and the game is over. You all know, we've all felt it. We've felt the game just slipping out of our hands. Thanks to this stupid... This stupid creature. Not to mention it has lifelink as well. So even if you were close to killing your opponent after the board is wiped, they have you know they can randomly gain some life as well. There's a lot of text on this card for no damn reason. Anyway, are you excited? Who's excited for this? I know I'm excited. 
because that was <laughs> Lurus was a big deal for me. I was really peeved off by this card. And now it's worked the entire way around. Decks with a companion are going to have a huge edge against the attrition based decks, and the attrition based decks don't have this anymore. I still think we're going to see Hammer Time being a really high quality deck in the format. I don't think they depended on Lurus at all. Uh, we'll also see, and Burn at the same time also is not going to be affected by this change because I don't think Lurus was not a really big deal for them as well. Anyway, goodbye, Lurus. Welcome to the new modern which is basically sending a signal that companions are not welcome here. And one by one, they're all going to disappear. Anyway, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time a companion gets banned.